In this video, I'm going to show you some top level strategy in the Spanish opening. Let's see those moves on the board. There we go. The Spanish or the, the Ray Lopez, as we say in West London. Um, uh, there's also an exquisite finish to this game. So stick around. I think you'll, you'll really enjoy how the game concludes. So the Spanish, uh, well, or yeah, some people say the Ray Lopez or Ruy Lopez, named after a Spanish priest who recommended this in the 16th century, Ruy Lopez de Segura. He also suggested that you should position the chessboard so that the sun shines in your opponent's eyes. There we go. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. So this is the main line of the Spanish. And we've been looking at this in recent videos. And some people have been saying, well, why would you want to defend this position with black? It looks like such fun for white. But I want to show you a game where actually things work out in black's favor. And this is a very nice game. Play with the black pieces, David Navarro. I'm a big fan of his play. He loves complex positions. And this uh, Brea variation certainly fits his style. His opponent, uh, Sergei Azarov, a strong grandmaster. So let's have a look. Once again, it's this Brea variation named after Dula Brea, who was a Hungarian player in the early part of the 20th century. And this was his invention. It's a very clever idea. The knight redeploys, protecting this one, protecting the pawn on e5. So the bishop comes to b7, looking at the pawn on e4. So it's not, uh, the bishop is not obstructed by the knight. And also it means that black c pawn is ready to advance, putting pressure on white's center and the pawn advances creating a nice square for that knight to come in here so this follows exactly um the moves of the, the games that we've seen so far in the video for example between tal and spassky and spassky and portish so that bishop comes out probing on the king side. And here the Tal Spassky game went rook b8. If you haven't seen that game, then do check out those videos. You'll find the links in the description down there somewhere. Um, <clears throat> knight c5, yeah, that's a fantastic square for the knight looking at these key squares in white's position. Queen d2 attacks the pawn here. And now h5, this is the, the main line of the Brea, or oh, one of the main lines. There are so many complex uh, variations. And bishop g5, so the bishop returns to pin this knight. And bishop e7 breaks that pin. And here there's a big branching of the ways. Um, this rook can come up here. And doubling on the A file, you can also play that rook over to B1. You can play Queen E3 to protect the E pawn. Lots of ideas for White. It's such a rich position. But Azarov goes for Bishop H6. Now Knight D7. So this Knight maneuver is very common. Very often the Knight will come around to B6. Put pressure here and you know maybe with the idea of moving that knight into a4 but also the knight uh, well clears the f6 square as we're going to see that's actually quite important rook f1 now we saw in in the uh, the, the, the two previous Breyer games how moving this knight out of the way and going for f4 is a very important part of white's strategy to open up the king side. So let's see how Navarra deals with this. First of all, bishop f8. Well, the bishop exchange will certainly help black just to reduce the uh, the number of pieces in the position. 
So Azarov doesn't want that. Bishop g5. And, well, Navarra is happy to uh, just repeat the position. You know, he's chasing that bishop. And Azarov varies. He's not content with the draw. Well, why would you be as white when you have this lovely space advantage? So he puts the bishop back to e3. Avoiding repetition, and now bishop f6. Well, this is directed against this pawn push f4. So the bishop comes round, and it opens the, the line for the rook. So you have to imagine that white is going for f4, and in that case, the rook will be nicely placed and the bishop nicely placed as well. So knight g5. So absolutely typical. White occupies this square and is looking to get in the pawn break f4. So, well, imagine how would you play with black here? It's not, not so simple to deal with that. But Navarro's next move is, is excellent prophylaxis. He plays the queen to e7. So this is directed against f4. Let's just have a quick look at f4. I, I should say that uh, white did not play f4 here, but let's just have a quick look. This is important. So what happens? Well, black is going to take and then push the knight away into the corner. This pawn push, very important in, in the brayer for black. And then you can take here and some tactics. Knight takes pawn. So if bishop takes queen, then you have knight takes queen. And that means that black has won a pawn. So this is the idea. Basically, f4 has been prevented or at least discouraged. And now, I mean, here white has, has a choice. Uh, in the game, white played rook e1. Uh, he wants to force through f4. But white could turn back to the queen side, rook a3 and rook a1. Or perhaps rook fb1. That's another possibility with the idea of breaking open the queen side with b3. But white has dreams of a kingside attack as do many players here. We saw that with, with Tal and Spassky. So rook e1, supporting that e-pawn. But Navarra is switched on. He played rook f8. So that f7 pawn is obviously going to be vulnerable if white gets in f4. So he just nudges back to protect it. And here f4 is possible, but... Black is pretty well set up now to, to cover with these peace manoeuvres. And no doubt Navarro would simply take on a4. And, you know, there's there's going to be counterplay on the queen side. Uh, rook b8 at some moment. So after rook f8, Azarov played king h1. So he's still preparing that move f4. He just nudges the king out of the way. And b takes a4. But, I mean, maybe this is... King h1 is actually indicative of the fact that white isn't quite sure what to do. Because king h1 wasn't strictly necessary. Anyway, let's continue. So Navarre has taken on a4. And here, white could again switch back to rook a1 and take on a4. But again, white is fixated on the king side. It's, it's understandable. There are so many nice games where white's strategy is, is, you know, crashes through on the king side. So he played h4, just securing the knight on g5. But this is... A source of future trouble as we're going to see. Yes it blocks black's h-pawn but just watch what happens now. a5 from black. Okay this is a nice move. 
prepares potentially bishop a6 and then that will support the knight coming into d3 and of course opens up the b file as well. Now white decides finally to break with f4. But there is a problem here. Pawn takes and now knight e5. Now this is very different from the f4 breaks that we've seen before. The difference being with this pawn on h4 that the g4 square is now available for black. And you can see that, as I said before, black is actually very well set up to meet this f4 break. With those two knights as well, perhaps looking at this d3 square and yes, knight g4 as well. So white actually is not well placed here. It is very different from the cases we looked at previously. And here white actually decides, well, he, he wants to keep going forward. He can't see any other way. I mean, if he hangs around, then this knight will perhaps come in here. There's, there's knight d3 as well. So white decides, right, I've just got to go for it. You know, that's what he's been uh, building up to, to breaking through on the king side. But it's just not good enough here. But it is complicated. Let's have a look. Pawn takes and pawn takes f5. Well, if white can actually get that queen over towards the king side, then he could be in business. But doing that is not simple. Navarra played knight d3. And, well, this, this hits lots of stuff here. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a, a, a good old octopus knight to me. It's time, time to display my t-shirt and my octopus knight mug here. Yeah, I'm well prepared for this game. Available in the Teespring Powerplay uh, chess shop. Do take a look at the links. Uh, so, advert over. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes. And... Now there's there's a nice pawn on d3. Remember, black is a piece up here. And that bishop wants to take here. Pawn to c4 protects the pawn on d5. Rook c8. And now white decides bishop takes knight and rook e4 to try and get some control. Uh, defends the pawn on c4. So bishop a6, Navarra still wants to take that pawn. Queen takes, and now bishop takes knight. And black should be winning this position. Clearly the attack has, has not uh, broken through as white wants. Pawn takes and queen g7. So, yeah, after this f6 move, the queen is able to come across to defend the king. Queen takes. Looks like Navarra has everything under control. But be careful. Rook f3 threatens to win the queen. King h... King, excuse me, king f7. Queen takes a5. Still a little bit random. This queen is attacking the bishop, might try to get through to the king. Rook g8 threatens a mate. The rook comes back. And now the simplest way for black to play is to give a check here and to take with the rook. Actually, Navarra goes a little bit wrong in this position. Uh, he takes on c4, still looks good. Check. But here it starts to get a bit messy. Queen coming in to hit the rook, and there could be a check here as well. Uh, it's still actually winning for black. Queen check and bishop d3 uh, for the record, but Navarra played bishop a6, and things go a little bit wrong. That bishop is dropped. Now, I'm not quite sure of the time control of this. This was played in the Czech team championship, so I don't know whether... Um, they were playing to a finish or, or what the story is. But here, 
white should play rook f1. That would be more tenacious. Instead, he played king h2, which looks very plausible. And here is where Navarra comes up with a brilliant bit of calculation. This is absolutely fantastic. So black to play and win from this position. He played king h8, threatening to play queen g3, mate. So white's queen came back, queen d3. So how do you keep up the pressure? Pawn to h4. So this threatens a check here. So for example, if rook e2, then black can force a checkmate with rook h1. Very nice. So therefore, rook e3 defends the g3 square again. And now, how does black win from this position? This is fantastic. This is absolutely beautiful. And very typical of Navarra, you know, when it comes to the finish, he's really precise with his calculation. This is beautiful. Pawn to e4. And this just upsets white's defense. Uh, so if that's taken, then once again, we have this queen g3. And, and it's a nice queen sack and rook h1. So we, we know that story. So And the same goes with rook takes, of course, queen g3 again. So this queen has to stay on the third rank protecting here. And now a really nice finishing move from Navarra. After his next move, white resigned. What did he do? Rook f1. That was game over. If rook takes, then queen g2 mate. Okay, that's clear. All right, what happens if the rook shuffles across? Well, then we have queen f4 check. If the king moves up, then rook h1 is mate. And if g3, we take... And then rook f3 is a winning move. Just cutting off the defense here. Threatening the queen. Threatening queen takes rook. And that is game over. So beautiful finish at the end by Navarra. Uh, it got messy. Um, but basically Navarra had it under control. But for me, the kind of star moves in this game were these preparatory prophylactic moves by Navarra. So bishop f6, and then queen e7, and then rook f8. And this basically nullified this idea with f4. And then he could turn his attention to the queen side and taking here. Of course, if white had exchanged, you, know, you don't want to give up a pawn, then that would free the rook for action down here. So, you know, it's not, not so easy for white. So there we go. I wanted to kind of balance things up and show you a game where black triumphed in the Spanish. It's not so simple. Thanks very much for watching. Do comment, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that stuff. Let's get to 100K. Thanks for watching.